Hello and welcome to the class today. Today we're going to be painting an oak tree. It's not a difficult class. It's a nice little easy process. A little takes a little bit of time so you do have to be patient but yeah follow along. It's going to be great fun. Let me show you what the picture looks like and then we'll plan out our artwork from there. So I got this photograph of Pixabay. What I liked about it was it was so misty you've got no background to worry about. So that really made the, the tree front and center in the picture and that's what we want to learn today. So we don't have to worry about all sorts of other stuff in the background. We can just go ahead and concentrate on the tree. So obviously there is, it's not white, there is some color in the background. So we will just add a quick little layer of paint in the back. And we've got a little bit of grass here in the front just to settle the tree in. And then we can get on and get back down to the good stuff, painting the tree. So let's head over to the canvas and get going. So if you are a patron, you can go and download the handouts for the class. You've got a color photograph and a template inside the one PDF. And then there's a tile template for the reference photo as well as a tiled full-size template. So I am working on a 16 by 12 inch canvas today, which is basically 400 by 300 millimeters. Alrighty, so I have now just sketched out the tree. Now to get our background in quickly, the quickest way or the easiest way of doing it is to mask off just the, the worst of the tree. Basically the tree trunk and then just a just a an indication of the branches. It's not a, a famous tree, it's not a tree we know, so it's not a, a problem if we do get our our branches in different places. So I'm basically just going to mask off just the the tree trunk, just using some masking tape. So that will now allow me to quickly paint the whole background by going straight over all of this and not worry about carefully going around all these gaps and so on. So through the masking tape I can actually see the, the lines, the sketch lines. So when trimming like this, always use a nice sharp knife. That's where you know you're not going to accidentally cut through your your canvas because you don't have to press so hard when you're using a sharp knife. I often use clear cover as well when I'm making a mask. You can use that too. If you've got some of that lying around, you may as well use it. So like I said, I'm just concentrating on the on the large branches. And some of these little small branches they're going to have, as I've cut out this, can you see they've got just little samples of where they're going to be? And that'll be enough for me to, to judge their positionings afterwards. And then maybe just this, this long guy over there. So obviously if you are patient, you, you can go ahead and just paint the background without uh, blocking off and masking your, your main branches. But for me, you know what, it goes so quick, it's really, it's not a time consuming exercise whatsoever, it goes really fast. And then while I'm at it, I think I'm going to mask off just these two um, back, the backrest essentially of the of the chair, and that'll give me enough information so that if I lose the lines on the chair, then I'll be able to just judge where the bottom bit is. It's now luckily quick and easy to. Just get those two extra little little guys masked off there. You could mask this off, but it's quite thin, so it's easier to just 
paint it in because chances are you're going to mask it off a little bit too thick and then it's not going to look right so i'd rather just judge him in great let's head over to the palette and go and mix some colors so the main mission that we want to do now is just get some color into into the background area so for that there is a ton of white so we start off by putting down some titanium white so i won't be shy with that i'll put a decent dollop of that down there because that's now essentially going to cover the whole uh the whole canvas almost hopefully that's enough <laughs> all righty so then it's like a bit of a an orangey pinky color because you've got all these autumn colors it's clearly autumn at the moment in the scene so let's take just a tiny touch of cadmium orange just a little bit like that right, so the first thing that i'm going to do is white tends to be quite quite thick so I'm going to take that white and I'm going to add my painting medium to it. So the one I'm using here today is the Archival Oils Oatless Classic. Any nice watery painting medium will do the trick. So the thing with medium is always keep the bottle closed because his purpose is to dry itself out. And the way paint works, or oil paint, is that it, it oxidizes. So, in other words, if it gets in touch, in contact with oxygen, that's when it dries out. So, if you leave your bottle open, then your, your medium is gradually drying itself out. So, that's why I use the, the paint dropper. So, I'm now adding a fair amount. I want it creamy, but not runny. Just a good consistency that you get out of most paint tubes. I'm bringing it to that. So, if your white paint is at a good consistency then that's fine and then once you get it to that then you add a bit more just so that it can flow off the brush nice and easy and that's also another reason why I like to mask off the tree because with oil you have to follow the fat over lean rule so if you start off too thin, then you have to end up making your, your subsequent layers thinner and thinner and thinner. So that doesn't leave you much gap then to have thinner layers if you make your, your background too thin. All right, so now we've got that. Just going to bring in a little bit of orange into that. Don't add too much because... Otherwise, you're going to end up too intense. What we've essentially got here is just some of the some of the surrounding colours are shining through the and and colouring the mist. Just a bit more, just enough for me to see it. So what I am doing is I'm comparing what I've got here with what the white looked like previously over there. Okay, now I can definitely see a big difference between there, eh? Or a, a decent difference. So let's try that. make sure we've got nice good amount of that new color on there let's go back to the canvas let's check that yeah there we go now I can see that color before it just disappeared and that's fine so the color does change it goes to more of a bluey on this side for some reason So I think we'll start that and let's see, we've got this 
mist effect kind of disappears in this vicinity. So everything else must be blocked in. So luckily I can see most of my little sketch line still through the through the mist, which is good. They're just 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 visible, most of them. So as you scrub this in, make sure you get it nice and use crisscrosses and stuff to make sure you get it nice into the weave of the canvas. You don't want those little white dots that stay behind if you don't uh, cover the canvas completely. So I know you can't see it hectically, but it, that color is there. And that will just add that harmony in the background to the rest of the painting. All right, so let's have a look over there. Is more of a, a bluey kind of color. So we'll have to introduce that, that blue. So let's go back to the palette and mix it. Right, so I'm going to take this. It's not so much, so I'm going to just use a little bit. I'm not going to bother cleaning the palette or the knife or anything like that. So for the blue, I'm going to take a bit of French Ultramarine. Put some of that down there. We don't need much of it, so I'm just a just a little. Okay, let's get a medium in there. So if you're painting along in acrylic, you'll probably not need to thin down your, your paints with water. Right, so I'm going to start off with it just quite a week. I'm, I'm comparing those tonal values and getting them roughly the same because this is the kind of color that's at the top. And as we come down, it becomes a bit more of an intense blue. So I'll start with this, because that's the majority in, in that background that we've got. And I'm not going to clean the brush, I'm just going to wipe the excess off. Just on my paper towel. Cool, let's get that in here on this side. Again, make sure you give it a good old scrub. Now you can see the difference over there, eh? Now that we've got some opposite color. So I quite like this little bit of blue in here. Because it's the complementary color, complementary colors always make each other look more vibrant. Alrighty, so we, as we get down to there, we'll, we'll work in some more of the ultramarine. But before we do that, let's just get a bit of a transition going on here so that we don't have it so hectic from blue one side and suddenly orange on the other side. So I'm going to just pick up some of the blue and work it into the orange over here. So I'll put some down over there and then just blend these colors into each other. Sort of until that halfway mark. That should give us enough of a, a transition over there like that. You can paint straight over your masking obviously. That's what he's there for. <laughs> he's just doing his job now. Awesome. Now let's pick up a little bit more of Ultramarine. And I'm picking up just straight up off the palette. Let's pop the palette down there. Can you see there? Just picking up straight off over here. So he's doing his own little mix as I pick it up. Let's bring that in around here. So let's see, it's above the chair, it's about there, in that vicinity over there. So I'll just bring some of that in. And I'm going to just blend them upwards and away. I'll 
take him over the tree out into this area over here so there's either a light that's over here maybe there's some water or something that's causing the the blue look but I'm just going up and down, up and down, up and down. I know there's quite a hard edge on the on the photograph, but I think I'm going to make mine a bit more of a just a smoother smoother blend over there. And then over here, let's bring this past the tree over there. So we have some of that colour here too that we can work with. Now I'm also just going to get rid of that excess on the brush again. On, onto the paper towel off the brush and I'm going to do the same thing with the orange so I'm first going to just pick up some orange just to neutralize that little bit of blue that's, that's left there and now we can nick some of this this orange over there just a quick little impromptu mix so I'm just judging the, the tonal value versus the versus the photograph It seems to be more down this vicinity over here. As we do, we'll start over here and we'll gradually work our way up. And he'll also just blend himself in there. And once you're happy with that blend, now come to the blue and blend the blue and the orange into each other like that to get that transition going over there. And go past the the edge of the tree onto the other side as well. In other words, ignore the tree. Just look at this the physical transition from this. And must go gradually from a, a more intense blue to like a just an, a neutral grey kind of colour. And then we come back to this orangey kind of look over here. Alrighty. So now while we add it, we can move further down so to get those colors over there i'm going to start introducing a new color and that would be some yellow ochre so i'm going to take the yellow ochre and i'm going to take the orange just like that and i'm going to work that in so i'm going to just judge roughly where is this where is this color? So we've got sort of two around here by the by the chair. And then he goes upwards like that. And he disappears out into the into the distance over there like that. And this side here becomes bluer again. So while we at it. Pick up a little bit of that blue. You can pick up some uh, umber as well, just to make sure you sh you're staying in that neutral grey kind of colour. I don't want this to be too too intense. And it does now seem to be going up a little bit higher past the, the top of the tree. So I'm roughly judging that like that. And then here's all our, our grasses. Okay, so as we come out to the right hand side, I'm going to add a bit more blue into this. And that should get us roughly at that, that bluey gray that we've got happening there. And then just keep fading him upwards into that mist. Yeah, so now we've got mist and now we've got some ground that we can that we can see through the mist there like that. And it's got a nice constant transition from the one to the other. Alright, so now we have literally a multitude of leaves. 
that are lying down there. So there's a few ways that we can get that um, that effect. It's really, 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 really small leaves because they out into the distance. So we can use stick with this brush and just pick up the paint and, and we'll put it down in dabs. Or you can use a, a fan brush as well. They're also good. I, I don't often use a fan brush because they tend to create patterns too easily. But in a situation like this, the, you're going to have lots and lots of layers over each other. So then those patterns do tend to disappear. So I'll do a bit with this and then we'll do a bit with that and you can you can see. We do need a few different colors to overlap each other. So I'm going to start with a darker one. And, and our dark color here is just ultramarine and raw umber. And yellow ochre, sorry, not raw umber. Yellow ochre, it's giving you like a raw umbery kind of color. And I'm seeing it sort of in this vicinity around here. Let's just get a bit of medium into that. So I think let's, let's go closer up. So when we're painting, we're usually starting from the, the dark to the light. So that's why I'm starting with a dark color. So we'll have to get just a bit more medium into that. The big thing with getting all these dots, we need the paint to come off the brush really quick and easy. You don't want to have to press hard because if you press hard, then your dots get larger and larger. So you have to just play around with the amount of medium that you've got in the paint to see whether you're getting that uh, effect or not. That's so all I'm doing is just taking a look and see what's the darkest little dot in that area th that I can see. And at this distance over here, this, this seems to be the, the darkest kind of color that's visible. Definitely some of that running out to this side of here as well. So again, I'm, I'm constantly picking up paint and I'm ignoring the tree. I'm painting past the tree. Yeah, I don't see too much more of this color going further up. Our, our darkest color quickly becomes quite lighter. So now I'm going to just add more yellow ochre to that. Possibly a bit more of this orange. Just to lighten it up a bit. Keep adding more medium. Just to adjust the consistency as you're adding more, more paint into the mix. more orange into that as well. Okay, no orange over there, just over here. Alright, so that's that's the effect you get using the fan brush. Now I'm going to go back to using this. So when I do, what I'm going to do is just smash the the brush down on the can on the palette like this. What it does then is it, it spreads these hairs out a little bit more, like that. So then they're not so um, on top of each other. Okay, let's pick up some of this paint again.
And even as I pick up this paint, I'm also just stabbing it down like that to keep those hairs separated as much as I can. And now with the lightest, lightest touch, I'm tapping down. Okay, so I think we can add some more orange to this mix now over here. More orange, a bit more white. And a bit more medium to just adjust him. So you can decide, play around with your fan brush and your and your bristle, any bristle brush would work like for this, for something like this. Play around and see which one works best for you. The fan brush works better for you, great. I think you can see both of them give you pretty much the same kind of effect. All right, so now let's start going just a little bit lighter, a bit more yellower. So I'm going to introduce an, a next new color, which is some cadmium yellow. I'm just going to pick that up and add it to the mix. added new paint so we need to just adjust this consistency with some more drops of medium I think we can go bright I'm even gonna nick just a little bit of neat white So what we're essentially creating here is a shading using thousands of dots. And look here, I'm holding the brush super light in my hand. I want it to wobble like that. I don't want to press hard. The minute you press hard, you lose these little dots. Then these dots start becoming blobs and shadings and you lose all those little fine details that impression of the fine details I'm going to take this a, a reasonably way on over there I am seeing some lighter guys here past the tree just so that we start getting a shading from that darker through to these lighter guys in this vicinity over here all right don't take them too far up otherwise we uh we lose our mist effect let's get some more white into this Some more medium. And between each of these different layers that we're adding, make sure that you're getting a, a, a good contrast between the different colors. As we get here to the top, we want this to fade away, so I'm pressing super gentle with these super light color, just so that it's, it becomes like a bit of a shading using these dots. You see how they're just fading off into the distance, so don't add too many of them here in front. Just one or two little light taps is enough. There's one or two just light guys this vicinity over there not too much I'm actually seeing a bit more browny kind of colors in that vicinity over there so we'll add some more of that just a few little odd of these light dabs here in front not too much now this somehow giving a little bit of a stripey effect so I'm happy to 
keep that stripey effect there. It just tells you that there's there's ground. All right, so let's see. Just a little bit more darky kind of colors would be great. Just going a little bit further up. It's a bit more yellow ochre, a bit more blue, touch of orange, same as what we had before. That's great. So now I'm going to go a little bit more orange and a little bit more blue. Let's add some more orange there. So that we can move off towards the right hand side where we've got more of a blue bias in our color. Okay, let's start with that guy. He seems roughly what I'm seeing on the photo there. Yeah, it looks like we can go way bluer than that. So we've got much more ultramarine into the mix. Let's check him out. That's better, eh? I think we can go even darker eventually. But this is quite a bit of a, a, a shadowy kind of area, this. Colors are quite dull over there. As we go up over there, things become a bit more more blue. So I'm going to pick up blue and work it in here. Not in there. So we're reducing the amount of yellow ochre that's in the mix. And we're not adding any more new yellow ochre. Yeah, let's work this in here. So again, I'm sticking to that sort of angle of these these taps and lines. Let's get more blue in there. And again, I'm moving it, creating a new pile to make sure that the amount of yellow ochre is just reducing every time. And our color is becoming bluer. Okay, let's go to over there. Now let's get some more white in the mix here. Just so that it can completely fade away. Get a little fading effect over there. Very, very light touch. I think I'll even just use some of this. Neat. Super light touch. You have to really resist adding any pressure onto the brush. Okay, so now I'm just getting rid of the excess off this brush. Everything over here, these grasses and things, they're in front of the tree. So we'll have to do that later. So now if you're happy with what you've got over there, you can remove your masking tape. Alrighty, so I have washed my hands just with some uh, handy handy and water. Just to make sure they're clean because you, as you're taking off the masking tape you always end up with some, some paint on you. These colors here on the palette, we are mostly finished with them. But they may still come in handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop them down just one side. That way, if we do need some of them, then we can just pick them up and go. I think these colors over here, we don't really need. they they just not enough paint. It's just a smidgen of paint over there. Then the rest, I'm going to clean off. 
don't think I'll bother washing the palette or anything like that. Just scrape off that excess over there. That's good enough. So what I usually do at this stage, once I've just taken off the masking tape, is I'll quickly have a look over and see, are there little places that I've maybe forgot to mask? Or maybe something that I overmasked. That also happens. Sometimes you, you miss a spot and then you've, you've got a little area that's been masked that shouldn't have been masked. And I'll just come in with a fine liner and just fix up those one or two little places. For example, over here on mine, I can see here's just a little bit of the orange that, that needed to be in over there. There, those gaps are good, those gaps are good. And then we've got these other little branches which are fine. Yep, there's another little spot that I I didn't do. So I'll just quickly touch them up. Like that. And that's why, that's the reason why I never throw any paint away until I'm finished the painting. Because you never know when you need just a, a little bit more of it. Right. So now we need to block in our tree. So let's go to the picture and see how, how, how are we going to tackle this. So we have multiple things happening here. You've got leaves and branches that at, at the back. Then you've got your trunk and, and the main branches sort of in the center. And then you've got leaves in front again. So what I'll usually do is... I'm going to put in the trunk and the branches first and then I'll use color perspective to show that there are leaves and stuff at the back and leaves and, and then more intense colors to show the leaves that are in front. In other words, you're going to sometimes just exaggerate the amount of color perspective that's happening in the scene to show that the leaves are at the back. Because as something goes further away from you, its colors become less and less and less intense. Okay, so now we need to mix the color for the trunk and the branches. So let's zoom into, say, an area like this. Can you see what's happening? You've got some of the sky color is washing out or infusing with the color of the, the tree itself. So we're going to have to create multiple colors then we've got all this bark and stuff creating all sorts of textures with a ton of different colors so the first thing that you're going to do in a situation like this is just look at the overall color so in in this scene our light is coming from the left to the right and you can see that by this side of the tree is brighter than that side of the tree over there. So what I want you to do in a situation like this is stand well back so that you can just see that overall color and you can't see any of the detail anymore. Sort of look at the scene also through your, through your eyelashes. Ignore and not see any of the detail and just see the overall color. Those are the colors that you're going to now mix. And we're going to paint them in. Then we'll use other colors to get all those details in. Great. So looking at that tree trunk, it's, it's quite dark. So I think I'm going to start off with a raw umber. That should give us a nice little base. But raw umber, Payne's gray, you know, any, any darkest kind of color so paints gray if if i look at the tree sort of top right hand side it's more of a bluey kind of a color and, and that's where the paints gray is going to come in where if you look more towards the left hand side that's more of a brownie color so that's where the raw umber will come in so we'll use sort of two different colors and there's definitely some some blue in the scene over there so let's get a little bit more of our French ultramarine back into the scene there. And then there's oranges and yellows. And yellow ochre kind of colors 
coming into the, the branches and stuff as well. So I'll get a bit more yellow ochre. So I think for the most part, these guys should get us sorted with the with the trunk and the branches. So I'm going to take my um, Payne's Grey and just add a little bit more blue to it. Payne's Grey is a, a bluey color and uh, on its own. Maybe I can show that to you. It's a blue black. So I'll take just a little bit of white, take a bit of um, Payne's Grey and work that into that. So if you look carefully, you'll see that that's got a bit of a, a bluey tinge to it. So adding the ultramarine just increases that that blueness to it. All right, so I'm I'm seeing some really darks, but not a ton of absolute blacks. Just here and there, in between all the little cracks and crevices, I'm seeing a few little blacks. So I'm going to take this and just add a little bit of white into that. So we might as well nick this as well. Add that into there. Just so that we can see that little bit of color. And if we do need to add some really, really darks, then we'll do that. Okay, we'll do the same with that. It's dark colors, so there's no need to wash, um, wash the knife or clean it or anything like that. Yeah, just like that. That's great. Just added a little bit of, you can see the color now where you couldn't before. Great, let's get some painting medium into these guys. Not a ton, just one or two little drops. All we want to do is just add ourselves that, that drying action. I guess it's quite a large area, so I think I'm going to start off with the the same hardware brush as what we used before. And I'll just start you in the main the main trunk. So I'm just going to start you in the main trunk itself. On this nice big brush. I'll get as close to the edge as what I can, but I don't need to go right up to the edge. Otherwise, you find that your tree becomes uh, broader and broader. <laughs> and I'm just going to see where do I see these colors. I'll just pop them in. As we get there to the the branches and stuff will have to go to a smaller brush and as we get here to the bottom as well we'll, we'll stop there okay so now i'm going to go over to the the Payne's gray version he's on the shadow side let's get him in again okay, come almost to the edge of your tree because this big brush is not going to give you nice uh, sharp edging or anything like that. All it's going to give you is a, a very rough edge. I see everything over here is quite dark. And all this gray kind of color. So I'll block all that in over there. And over here. So there you've got those two little branches and I've got that really dark in the center. So for now, I'm just going to leave myself a little bit of, of the, the canvas shining through. Just so that I don't lose that position. Okay, here where these two guys meet each other seems to be sort of more on the 
the brownie side, so I'll pick up some brown and I'll just blend these guys very roughly into each other. So what you've done now is just created a, a quick little shading over there. And that's rounded the tree off. It's made it look round. And that was our main mission at this stage. Get rid of the white of the canvas and round off the tree so that we haven't got a, a flat object. We've got a round object. Awesome. Let's go to a smaller brush. It's sticking just with these standard bristle brushes. Yeah, I think I'll use this guy for now, which is roughly a, like a half an inch, a one centimeter kind of size. And I'm just going to take a look. What what color am I seeing? Is it a is it the bluey brown or is it the the browny brown? <laughs> I'll come nearly to the edge of these guys. So here's this piece here is a little bit bluey brown. So I'll bring that in there as a bluey brown, but then it comes back and it turns back into a brown, a browny brown. Fabulous. There at the top, there's one guy that sort of just um, is going away from us. So we'll have to apply some uh, atmospheric pers perspective to him. And now as we come out this way, these guys over here also become lighter and lighter. So it also happens with your branches, they become skinnier and skinnier as we get closer to the edge. So we'll also have to use gradually smaller and smaller brushes on that guy. Okay, that's fine over here. This is all dark. And that's as good as I'm going to get with that. These rough brushes. Awesome, so now I'm going to go over to my favorite brush. The soft filbert. Why I like him so much is I can hold him like this and do nice broad shadings. I can turn him like that and do little skinny shadings all in one go. Without changing brushes. So let's start with the with the brownie brown. And let's get this edge a little bit more accurate. So the tree is rough. Don't worry too much about getting it perfect. All you want is just, you don't want those little little bits where the, as the brush has gone over and you see the dot, the dots from the, the, the weave of the canvas, you don't want that. So all this here is now wet, so I am going to use just another brush as a mile stick. Let's go a little bit wider and I can show you. So I'm just taking the brush and I'm holding it here in my hand like this or like this, and pressing it and touching it onto the table over there, just to the right of the canvas. Now I can lean my hand on here and, and do marks without worrying about touching the, the paint. So now as you add this edge, just add a little bit of a wiggle and a squiggle. The, the oak tree does have super fine um, bark, that roughness of the bark is, is super fine. So we can't wiggle and squiggle too much, but just add a little bit of a wiggle and a squiggle. It just adds adds a little bit of illusion of bark texture already. Right, so I think let's stick with the raw umber mix for now. And let's continue working on down here. Just keep wiggling and squiggling as you add these little edges in. If your colors aren't right, don't worry about it too much whatsoever. Okay, so there's a dark going over there. There's a bit of a light, so I don't want to lose that. So I'm just going to steal a little bit of this blue that we had over there just to lighten this area up just ever so slightly. Just so that we can start showing that. And while I've got that lighter on the brush, let's just add a little bit of just a very basic little shading over there. Just to show that there is lighter. I'll wipe off the brush, go back to the dark, and bring this really dark in here. So as with the main trunk, the idea here is just to get that little bit of shading happening there, so that we can see that 
the, the shapes. Of these branches and stuff over here. Just want to get a feel for the the shapes. No big contrast to anything like that yet. Okay, so this guy is a little bit lighter over there. I'm just adding a little bit of a shading. Can you see that? Seeing a little bit of a lighter in this vicinity over here. Like I say, be careful. Don't give it f too much contrast. Just enough for you to tell what's what. And you can visualize these roundings over here. Okay, let's get that edge done over there and this edge here. If you're still not getting a nice edge, then just thin down your paint a little bit more, but only enough so that you can get a nice sharp edge. Be careful of making your paint too thin at this point. Okay, everything here's all dark. So with these smaller branches and stuff, what you're going to do is start with a bit of a pressure on the brush so that the br the hairs on the brush spread apart and then they give you a broader line and then as you come near the tip gradually lift up the brush so that it goes thinner and thinner and thinner okay remember to wiggle and squiggle as you do the edge you see that instantly you've got a little bit of a little bit of texture happening there. So what I do want to show you now, now is now we're starting to head towards painting the branches. So what happens with a branch is I like to see trees as having a hangover because you find that most trees aren't growing perfectly upright. They're all either a little bit to the left or to the right or so on. It's probably just because that's the way the wind was blowing or whatever, when when it was a little young BB tree. But it's more fun remembering that uh, trees are got a hangover. <laughs> so for me to explain that concept, let's just go over to here. So when you have a tree, always give it a bit of a... A bit of a bit of a hangover like that. Let's maybe use a let's maybe use a pen just so that these lines stand out a little bit better. Yeah, so so there's our there, there's our tree trunk coming out over there, something like that. So when you've got a branch coming out over here, that branch can't be broader than that. So now you've got your branch coming out like this. Now remember when you've got a, if you've got a hangover, you're a little bit shaky. So you're going to put it in with a little bit of a shake. And then the branch also becomes narrower and narrower towards the end. So, th so there's your branch. So then what will happen is you have a, another branch coming out from this branch. And that width of that branch coming out from this one can't be broader than the area he's coming out from. So you've got another one coming out like this. You see I'm shaking and wibbling and wobbling. So there, there's my other branch. Then you've got another one coming out like this. Another one coming out like this. So the way these branches come out from each other is like this. The one goes this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way. And by doing that, You'll get yourself nice natural branches. All right, so let's do that. So yeah, I'm going to just take a look roughly and see where do these branches come out, just so that I can get a something similar for you to reference from at home. You, you your own tree. Don't panic too much about getting all these individual branches in the right places. Once you understand the concept, 
you can make up your own trees without any problems whatsoever. This way, and that way. This way, that way. So can you see how I can get quite, quite thin little uh, branches? Out of this brush. Okay, so you can see I'm already starting to do my own thing over here. So no way on earth I'm going to copy this um, this tree perfectly. It's just not possible. Right, so obviously I can't do the fine branches with that, so I'll, I'll leave that. Let's move back to this side. So this side, here we now have that infused light effect. Where all these branches coming out this way gradually becoming lighter and lighter and a bit more yellow and orange. -er. So we'll start off with our raw umber. And then we'll adjust that color as we go along. So I'll go along up to a point and then I'll stop. Because from there it now needs to go a little bit lighter. And I'll see where else can I say see the same tonal value as the paint that I'm that I've got now. And I'll paint those little branches in. So this branch is coming towards us. So by by using the, the different um, atmospheric perspective colors, you're going to be able to show that branches are coming towards you and branches are going away from you because they'll be coming darker and darker and more intense colors towards us and more subtle colors going away from us. And we're going to do that now. This branch is coming towards us, so he's darker. This guy over here is coming towards us. He's darker. That piece there is sort of semi going away from us. Or it's going sideways. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of tonal value there, where I see it's quite darker over there. There are some darker guys coming out over here. This branch over here, however, is actually going away from us. So he's dark over here, in that area there. And as we ca continue around him, along him, we're going to make him lighter and lighter. That guy at the back there is going away from us. So we're going to make him lighter and lighter. And that'll make him appear as though he's receding into the mist. But you'll do that whether there's mist or not. If you want your, your tree to make it look like it's three-dimensional. It's that little optical illusion that you create. Great, so I think that's probably... as much as we're going to be able to get in with this color just this one last little branch over there so I'm just wiping off the excess on my paper towel, no need to wash the brush because we're just using variations of the same color alright, 
So now we're seeing it's becoming a little bit more orange. So I'm going to work some orange into that and it's becoming a little bit more yellow ochre. So I'll work some yellow ochre into that. Not too much of a contrast. Can you see there? Let's maybe just enlarge that guy for a second. Can you see here? Yeah? This is more like a sort of a chocolatey brown where that's your, your raw umber. The neat raw umber color. So there's a good contrast there, but not a dramatic contrast. Now we'll just continue down where, where we ended off our previous branches. Like that. So don't over, don't mix them into each other, the colors and stuff yet. Let's first just get everything blocked in and then we'll do our blending. Because otherwise you, you change the color that's on the on the brush. It's going to now become a mixture of the, the darker and the lighter. And we don't want that yet. Alrighty, that's as good as we're going to get with that color. So now we can go a little bit lighter, so more yellow worker. A little bit more orange, maybe even a touch of yellow, some more white. So now I'm comparing this color with that color and I'm making sure I'm getting him a different color, but more yellowy, but more um, orangey, but also mainly lighter. There must be a tonal value difference between those guys there. Okay, let's check him out and see what he looks like. Try a piece. Is he lighter? If he's not, then you need to continue adding more white. Awesome. Can you see how he's gradually just fading out? So I'm going to try and get these guys now as, as thin as I can with the full bit. But as we get here to these edges, it's, it's going to start needing a... A finer brush. Alrighty, so up at the top here, here we have some some distant branches. So I'm going to add them in with this color. And most of these ones are going to be sort of hidden behind the behind the leaves, but at least they start to give us some some effect over there. Right, so this is as far as we can go with our, our bigger brush. So now we'll have to start using a fine liner or a rigger brush. And the minute you do that, you need to use thinner paint. What you also want is just look for places where you get branches that overlap each other. Because that also shows you that there's distance. Now when you're adding these branches, you do need to be patient because, as you can see, there's, there's plenty of them. So it can sometimes take you quite a while to, to get in all the branches that you need. Alright, so for here, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm probably going to just speed this up a little bit, just to save us some time. But what you're looking for is just getting all these little detail branches and stuff in as best you can. So remember to look for overlapping branches and, and use a smaller brush as what you need to. If you need to go over to using a a rigger brush or a smaller finer brush then go for it to do it. And as you do just keep using the lightest lightest touch. So if I am working from a reference, I am going to sort of roughly follow the, the branches and stuff that I do see on the on the tree. Because it does help you, you know, when you want to add all your leaves and stuff in afterwards. Because then you've got now a nice reference and a guide for, for where each of these little patches and stuff of branches need to come in. There where these different colors meet. Just 
gently work one color into the other. But don't, it doesn't need to be a blending. It doesn't need to be a blending whatsoever. Because you're going to be adding all sorts of textures over it. And you've always got one or two little random branches coming out at places. Like this over here. So it's, it's nice to put them in. Alrighty. So now we've got ourselves a nice skeleton that we can build on. So what we're going to do now is add some texture to this. So I'm going to start here on the on the branches and then we'll work our way back down to the to the bottom of the um to to the bottom of the trunk. So we'll go there and work our way down to there. Because here we've got less detail and as we come down we've got more and more detail. Alright, so let's zoom well in. So we're gonna stick to the rigger brush at this point. And that's probably gonna be important that you use your mouse stick to rest your hand on so that you don't now accidentally go and touch your your canvas because you've got plenty of paint on it. Alrighty, so take a look at the texture. And you'll see it's like really, really fine lines. It's almost like you've got the bark is running along the length like this, and then it's split along the length. So we're going to use a combination of lighter and darker marks. But in general, they're going to be lighter marks because we've we've blocked in the the branch with the darker kind of values. But places like that there, where it is quite light, then you'll come back in with a, a darker tonal value. And you can add in just little wiggles and squiggles. So what I like to do is I like to say you just let your, your, your brush dance over the canvas like that. So you put some darker guys in and you put a, a lighter guy in. So whatever color is on, on either side of whatever you've initially blocked in is generally what you're going to use. So when you do this, you also now just need to keep in mind where does the where does the sun come from? So here in the beginning, it, it's quite light. You're not fully going to see the the effect, but as we go along and we fill up more of this and make it a bit more prominent, you'll you'll start to see the technique. Uh, and, and the effect better and better and better. So again, the, with the oak tree, it does have a fine texture. So you do need to be reasonably patient with it. So now remember where the the sun is coming from. The sun's coming from the left to the right. So you've got to add your highlights on the sun side and, and the darker bits more on the on the shadow side. So here we're going a bit thicker. So you have to either press harder or go over to using a, 
a fine liner. So I'll stop over there. I'll continue just with, with these guys. Obviously the very small branches, they, they don't need... They don't need a texture, they're just simply too small. So you've got to just judge for yourself. If I stand back, am I going to see this texture? Or is it going to just disappear on me? If it's going to disappear on me, then, then don't bother. Alright, so I'm going to go over to a fine liner now. I'm done with the rigger brush. So as you pick up the paint with a fine liner, roll your brush in the paint. So that he makes a nice little sharp point. Can you see there? If you roll your brush in the paint like this, then it gives you a nice little sharp point. So as you add these guys in, just try and judge from the photograph, from the reference, how long do these little stripes of yours need to be? And obviously these stripes follow the the contour and the angle of the of the branch. So as the branch curls, so will these little angles that you have to put in. Just keep it running down there like that. So to save myself from having to wash the brush so often what I'm going to do is just try and use the same color at the same places wherever I see it so you'll find that you're going to be putting in this uh, this color here ra random places and, and you'll be working a little bit here and a little bit there as you go along So as I mentioned before, you do not need to be you do need to be patient if you do want to get a nice realistic looking tree in the end of the day. But it'll be well worth it in the end. But once you get into a little a little routine, it doesn't take that long takes a while but it doesn't take that long you'll actually find it's it's quite uh, quite therapeutic making all these little little marks okay so as we go along you're also going to find that these colors can tend to be quite quite gray so bring in some of your your paints gray and and white because that gives you a nice neutral gray and then just use whatever color else is it more brown is it more orange just to adjust the actual color that you've got or that you need all right and as you do you can use these initial little shadings that you put in to give yourself an idea or, or to remind you where the highlights are and where the shadow sides are because as you go along with these the texture you're going to have to gradually shade using the texture as well So you do that by just constantly adjusting the color that you're working with by making it lighter and darker, lighter and darker, just to get the right tonal value in the right places. So the tonal value that you need must be different enough from that initial block in of yours so that you can actually see the, the texture that you're putting in. Alrighty, so in this area I am now working with the on the bluey side. 
I'm just going to keep adjusting these colors. So I'll stick with the blue for a while. So I'll just keep adjusting these colors. Getting them a little bit more bluer and so on. Okay, so can you see I've gone dark, now I'm going a little bit lighter over here. And as I come down here, I'm going lighter. So here you've got a little bit of a a bit of a bump happening where all these branches meet. So you're gonna have to just keep changing your angles to show that bump. So it comes down like this, and then it comes out like that, and then it comes around like this. And the same thing happens here, where these two branches meet. Comes out like this for the front branch. And then it curls back in to meet that angle over there. Now I'm just going darker. So now those guys continue up over here. So that you get that continuous, think of it as a bit of a flow where the angles sort of merge. Like the different lanes do on a road. So sometimes you, when you're doing this, you do have to look really carefully between all the different uh, leaves and stuff that are in front to, to figure out what, what's the correct color to use. But I think you're already starting to see we're getting a nice little effect. Okay, so all the while I'll keep adjusting the colors just to make sure I'm getting the right colors that I'm seeing. Or similar at least example over here this is more blue so I'm adding more blue to more ultramarine into the mix so I'm looking at the color that underlying color in the area and the tonal value is the blue gray is the brown gray and so on where's the bit more orangey is the bit more yellowy For example, running down here, its colors are becoming almost almost like a peachy pinky kind of a color. So I've taken some of the the peachy color from the background that we used, added some more orange and just a tiny touch of ultramarine into that. And that's given us that that pinky tinge for this area over here. All right, so I'm going to continue like this for a while. I think I'm going to also just speed it up a bit. I think you've got a good feel for what I'm doing now.
So you're on the trunk, you'll, you'll notice that they don't just, all these little marks of yours don't go just up the tree, they do form a bit of a pattern. You've got here, it's running down like this, and then it also tends to be curling up there a little bit like this, and then the other guys coming like this. So you can add those different little patterns and stuff in there, because that's that's what keeps things interesting. They aren't just blindly running up the tree. Here on the sides, you'll find that these little lines are thinner and thinner because of perspective. Here, you're looking flat and straight on at these little textures in the back, but here, you're looking at them from the side. So if you have something like, let's take, let's take the width of this brush. So each of those is, or the brush is, is one of those little bark marks. So here in the center, you're looking at it from the front. So it's, you see it's full width. As you curl around to the side of the tree, see it's getting narrower and narrower and narrower until as you get to here, it's just a thin little line. And the same thing happens to that side. As you're seeing it more and more from the side, it's getting narrower and narrower and narrower until eventually it's just a skinny little line. So you're on the side, if you need to go over to using a rigger brush instead of using a fine liner, then do that. And then here in the center, you can press just slightly harder than you do. Or just pick up the paint by rolling it in the your brush in the paint. And then here on the sides you pick it up using it uh, pick up your paint like a chisel point by picking up the paint, rubbing it one way through the paint like this, and then you turn your brush 180 degrees, run it through the paint again. So that way you form yourself a nice little chisel point. So I'm just getting the right colors in the right places. There's more of the lighter guys, and as I move across, I'm gradually adding less and less and less of them to show that things are getting darker and darker. So it's a shading using these little little lines. Okay, I'll stop there just before the bottom of the tree because we've got different color changes and stuff happening there. And we haven't blocked it in there anyway. <laughs> As you come down here to the bottom of the tree, you can gradually start making these little marks of yours larger and larger because, yeah, this is quite old bark over here. And, and this is where the tree is at its broadest. So these little wrinkles in the bark will now start to be bigger as well. Here's a little brighter area. So I'm almost using the pink from the sky. It's just a little bit of yellow ochre kind of color in it. Yet, even though things are light over here, I'm making sure that I don't fully lose that original darker layer that we added in because those are the the little holes the the gaps in between these barks 
So if you lose that, then you essentially are losing the texture in the tree. So you can't fully lose that. Alrighty, let's finish off the bottom of the tree. So we'll have to go all the way back to just filling in the white of the canvas over there. So I'll just use some of our original mixes. Some of the raw umber stuff over here. Matter of fact, I'm pretty much using a, a neat raw umber over there. And as I go across, gradually start using some more of the the paint's grey. Yeah, that's fine. That's enough for us to add some some texture over that. So I'm going to paint now as though there's no chair or anything like that in front of this guy. Get that full texture in over there. For the most part, these branches here are being well covered by the by the leaves. So I'm just going to suggest a little bit of a texture here and there. Just so that if something does shine through, it's got a little bit of marking on it. But yeah, I'm not going to put much effort in on that side over there. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean, clean my brush. And I'm just going to drag in the shape. of the chair again. So I wash the brush, dry it off. And just drag it across here. And what I'll often do is even just use another brush. Just a a brand new brush. Am I painting cloth? So all we're trying to do is just get rid of the worst of the paint that's there. So I, I lift up some paint, wipe it off on the cloth. Lift up some paint, wipe it off on the cloth. And that's just getting rid of the excess paint that's there. So that when I do come back in with those chair colors, then he'll look good. And, and there won't be so much paint that I need to cover up. Then he should go on just fine. Alrighty, so at the moment we've got ourselves a, a nice tree without any, without any leaves. So that's what we're going to start doing now, is we're going to start adding in the leaves. Before we continue, I want to briefly tell you about my real-time paint and draw along art classes on my website. For a very small amount, you can get access to over 400 paint and draw along tutorials where you pack out your art supplies and you follow along as I show and explain to you in step-by-step -step detail how to complete each project. There are classes in acrylic, oil, watercolor, pencil, soft pastel and even lesser known mediums like pen and ink and scratch boarding. There's a link in the description below. Take a look. You'll be amazed at the awesome classes available there. Alrighty, let's continue from where we left off. So we're definitely seeing oranges, but then here in this area here, there's more like burnt sienna type of colors and possibly even crimsons towards that side over there. So it's time to introduce some new colors. So I'm going to put some 
Bouncy in over there. And some crimson over there. Now, as before, we can see that there's the colors are gradually changing. They're more like orangey. There they go more yellowy. Then they go more browny. And then here they come more a brighter orangey brown. And then there they become more um, crimsony. So we're going to have to gradually and constantly change our colors. So I'm not going to mix individual colors for that. I'm going to just mix impromptu colors as I go along. So to paint the leaves, let's go back to the photograph. What happens with the leaves is that they sort of grow in clumps because you've got some leaves that are coming off one branch, other leaves coming off another branch. For example, this branch over here, can you see? There's his clump of leaves. And then there's a smaller branch with a smaller clump of leaves and so on. Here's a branch over here. So there's a clump of leaves. There's a branch over there. There's the clump of leaves that belong to that branch. There's a sub-branch. There's the clump that belong to that sub-branch. And so on. So you're going to put in your leaves in clumps. The actual technique that you use to put in the clumps and, and the individual leaves inside those clumps is going to depend on the shape of the leaf. So this is the white oak tree and he's got a more of a rounded leaf. I think in this area here we can get a good feel for what those what those leaves look like. So they're, they're elongated, but they don't have pointy tips. They've got more rounded tips on, on the leaf. Then you'll find that because the leaves make a clump, that clump of leaves forms a... a group or a mass and that mass itself will have highlights and shadows and we can see it nicely in this area over here can you see these leaves here are in shadow so they are darker and these leaves here are catching sunlight so they are lighter so you have highlights midtones and the darker leaves in each clump as well and you can see it over there too, light, middle, dark, because our sun is coming from the left to the right. So what I'll usually do is make a decision on the, the shape of the leaves versus which of my brushes are going to give me that shape. So if I take a look, I've got fine liners. They're going to give me a rounded shape. Maybe not this one. This one is probably a bit small, eh? Maybe a bigger one like that. He seems to be look like he's going to give me that shape of the of the leaf. Let's maybe look at our uh, fan brush we used earlier. This little edge over here, that little edge over there, those two outside edges that could, could give me that. And then another thing that I'll often do is I will take a brush and I will chop it up. I'll just take a scissors. And I'll just cut into it like this until I've got a, a really odd looking brush. So there's one like that. There's one that's a little bit finer. And by the time you pick up the paint, let's just pick up some paint with this guy. And let me hold him over there. Can you see then some of these hairs now clump together? And that gives you a different effect. Let's just put a piece of paper down there. Okay, so that's going to give you that effect. Let's take this guy over here with a finer, the, the, the rougher guys. Can you see he's like this? 
So when I make my marks like that, he's giving me another texture. Let me just thin down the paint even more, just to get it to more to the correct consistency. You see there? So now I'm getting all sorts of different and random, very organic shapes by cutting my brush like this. And I'll often do that. I'll just do a little test for depending on which which tree I'm painting. I'll often do a little test with some of these little cut up brushes like this and with the fine liner and with the a fan brush or whatever. Whatever brush I think could possibly work. So let's try the fan brush. He's great, but can you see it's a lot more uniform, the, the marks that we're getting. And let's try the fine liner. Let's put him around here. Okay, so the, these marks here seem to be the most uniform using that. So for today, I think the best effect that I'm getting here is with the with a fan brush. So I'm going to use him. So let's zoom in, then I'll show you how we do these leaves. So initially, what I'm concerned with is getting the color right. So I'm going to look for the darker color of the lot. So in this little batch over here. It does seem to be sort of burnt sienna. So I'll put up some burnt sienna over there. And then it's darker. So I'm going to take some raw umber to darken it. And you can see it's all just impromptu mixes. That seems to be the color that I need. I'm going to get some medium in there. So what I'll often do is I'll just put a good old dollop of painting medium over there that I can just dip into with the different colors as I need to get the right consistency. All right. And now I'm going to just use, I've, I've more or less followed the correct placing of these different branches. So I'm going to just estimate again roughly the positioning Of these clumps. Now as I do and I put these clumps down I'm going to keep moving the, and changing the angle of the of the brush. Because that's now the big failing that you have with a with a fan brush as that is famous for creating repetitive patterns. So just by constantly moving and changing the the angle. Of the brush, it's going to help you to get a nice organic looking shape. You, you don't want your, your leaves to look like cookie cutter leaves. Because all these leaves are different angles and so on. Okay, everything over there is getting lighter, so it's just little bits. Little bits here and there. And now I know it's quite sad, you've spent quite a bit of time putting in all your little branches and now, now you're painting over some of them. So be it. That's not just the way it is. But don't panic. They are going to be just the odd little branch going to be added back in afterwards. Okay, so I am just being careful to um, get the correct colors. At the correct places. Don't get carried away and just use the one color all the time. Keep adjusting 
this little pile of paint of yours. Like I say, you have to paint over everything that you've done so far. As though it doesn't exist. Alrighty, so let's start getting a bit of highlight onto that. So let's bring our palette back. So now I'll just use the, the opposite side. And that's where I can get a highlight and a shadow going at the same time. So there was burnt sienna. And just some white in it and a bit of orange. Maybe even a little bit of yellow. Dip into my painting medium. We'll just add a drop. Whichever one's easiest for you. Okay, so there's my highlight. And I can use the opposite corner to add these highlights in. In on the sun side. Oh, it's I can see over here. I can add some uh, some darker guys as well. Let's maybe even get that a little bit more orange. So I'm adding more yellow and more orange into the mix. Right, so in this area over here, this color is the is the shadow color. So I'm adding more of that in over here. And as you add these leaves in and you're putting them in clumps, always remember that you don't or make sure that you put them in clumps and don't get carried away. And add one leaf, one leaf, one leaf, one leaf. Some places you've got lots of leaves, some places you've got less leaves. So by varying that, you stop it from looking spotty dotty. For example, there I'm going to specifically leave just that little bit of extra bark sticking through in that area over there. And I'm going to create a clump of leaves over here. There's a clump of leaves running and below it there as well. And even in that clump, there's a, a, a bigger gap, smaller gaps, and so on. Yeah, I think I may even use just some neat oranges as well in between all these guys. I 
Alrighty, so you know the technique that I'm using now. So let's stand back and continue. So I think I could maybe put the put the pillar down small over there. You can at least see which colors I, I am using at the moment. So yes, pretty much a, a neat burnt sienna for now in, in these areas around here. Alrighty, so just keep looking at your different colors and put them in at the correct places. Alright, so as we move around this way, you're getting a lot more infused light happening. So there's a lot less of these darker guys. Over there, the darkest ones are, are orange. So just keep checking. Alright, so I'm sort of done with that darkest color in this area now over here. So I'm going to, I've just wiped this side of the brush off, that dark side off with the with the cloth and that's got rid of just that excess paint that's there so now i can mix a different color in this case these guys are gradually getting more and more orange so i'm going to use actually even just some yellow let's put some yellow over there and just touches of orange into it So now what was the, the, the highlight color on this brush before is now the, the shadow color. Okay, so just keep looking for those little clumps. And remember those clumps are growing along the branch. So if you get to a point where you need to do your own thing, just grow your leaves out from the branch. And if you do that, it will definitely look natural. So I often tell myself a little story when I'm doing these little clumps like that. And that's the story of the families. So if you've heard my, if you've followed my classes for any time, you will have heard the story before, but I'm going to tell it again because it's a great time to do it. Things in nature, just like us, hate being lonely. They like to band together just like we do we all tend to live in cities and families and stuff so here we've got a big family the mom and a dad and lots of kids maybe a few aunties and uncles these guys over here they've just got married there's only a few little leaf kids that they've got these guys are still single Maybe over here, here's a kindergarten. Lots of little kids. They're all playing around in this area over here. Maybe the, these leaves in, belong to a different family. So that's why they've got a different color. Who knows? You can see we're starting to get some nice variety in our leaves, you know. And some leaves are bigger, some are smaller. Just like some people in different families are different sizes. Some are bigger, some are smaller. So I keep catching myself. The minute I see I'm getting too much of a the same pattern, 
then I change up my angle. The minute I see I'm getting too much of the same color everywhere, then I'm also I'm changing up my changing up my color. And that's why we're keeping things interesting the whole time. Okay, so as I'm coming here towards the end, I'm gradually adding more and more yellowy kind of colors into the mix. And that's making them look just more washed out. Start adding some white into that as well, into a few of them to get them even lighter. So these guys are now really well, well infused with the background. Okay, so I think I'm now going to go back the opposite direction again. So now I'm going to go darker. Let's get some more darker guys. In as well. Uh, so also I'm just keep judging how many leaves have I got versus on the photograph. Have, have I got the same kind of coverage or not yet? If I don't, just keep adding more. Right, so now I'm going to start heading off to the other side. And that's a lot more crimsony and grey kind of, really dull kind of colours. So I've washed the brush. And I'm going to work my crimson into the, the Payne's grey mix. Maybe with a bit of raw umber, but a bit of thin as well, why not? So the Payne's Grey is going to instantly turn it into quite a dull color. Maybe I'll add just a, a hint of white into that as well. Just so it's got some color. And here's plenty. So I'm going to just use lots and lots of dabs and dashes here at this stage. Now I'm just forming masses. I don't really care about a, um individual leaf effect or anything like that. Just trying to get masses. So here's big, this is a big city over here. So there's, it's, it's too crowded. We can't see any individual, individual families yet. We will shortly as we go along. So just work on these inside bits and get those masses right. Still all the while, keep turning your brush. Don't really want patterns at this point. Changing those angles. And make sure your paint is not too thick. If it's too thick then you're also not going to get a nice effect because it's going to, you're going to have to press too hard. Alrighty, we're starting to get a beautiful sunlit effect now that we're adding these darks in, eh? Look how nice and sunny those, those guys on the left hand side are looking. That's pretty cool, eh? Alright, so when you when you start heading towards the 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 right or a similar mass of leaves is what you need. You're on the central area. That's when you're gonna go over to taking your time again, being a little bit more particular about your dots because now we need to create that leaf effect out of this mass all these guys that are in between that we're putting in they've got to form our leaves 
So these little dots and stuff that you're adding in now, they need to be nice and crisp. So I'm sticking with the dark. Continuing to add little families. So I'm being very gentle here, just the tiny little tips, adding individual little, or suggestions of individual little leaves as well. Right, so are you starting to see detail coming out of that mass already? Now that we're adding all these little dabs and dashes and dots that are more detailed. Quite amazing, yeah. Com compare that with what we're doing over there. So wherever you see gaps, come in and add little suggestions of those details of individual leaves and stuff. So can you see how you've saved yourself a lot of time because now you would have had to sit here filling all that up with these individual dots when it wasn't necessary. Yeah, that's enough there like that. Great, so now we can start adding some highlights and stuff into this. So maybe even I'll add a few little low lights Little shadows. <laughs> so I'm going to use just some neat, neat paints grey. Make sure you have enough medium in there, so that you don't have to press hard. You want to press really light. And now I'm looking for these masses inside what I've created. For example, there seems to be a mass. So I'm going to add individual little dabs and dashes exactly like we did over there into that mass on the shadow side because we're now busy with the shadow shadow leaves I need to add this dark everywhere just because we want just a few little darker patches. That's enough. Cool. That's really dark, so I'm going to wash my brush because we do now need to go to some lighter colors. So the first lighter color I'm going to get is uh, just some burnt sienna. Need a tiny amount more. Okay, so remember these what we're adding now are sort of midtones in this area over here. So put them to the left hand side of your shadows. So that you don't kill all your shadows. And then obviously this is now the shadow colors for other clumps. So add little new clumps where this is the shadow. And in this area, some places, this is the highlight. So at this point, some of these guys I'm putting in here, you may not even be able to see because it is quite dark, but you've got dark on dark and it just adds lots of extra life when you come stand closer to the artwork. And it doesn't take long to add this. So it, it's not a it's a it's an easy one. For the guys that want to come and look at your artwork from a, a closer up. Your fellow artists, they always want to come and have a closer look to see how did you do it. So this is an easy win. So wow, look at all the detail, even in those darks. Look how many you can see each individual leaf. But yeah, in the end of the day, you, you, you can't. But you've created that impression that you can.
Okay, and the other places, this is now the, the shadow. So I'm forming new little families. But can you see, I think even on the video, you can see there is like now, there's life inside these shadow areas. It's not just one dull color. You, you've got suggestions of, of color inside those areas because of these these other guys that you're adding now. Alrighty, let's go even lighter. Take that. Add some more yellow. Yeah, it's great. I think for now I'm going to just stick with one color on the on the brush. Okay, so these are highlights. They're never going to be as bright as on this side because this is like in the shadow. But they, they're just getting that a bit of ambient light. So here and there, you've got just little bits and little sparkly bits. But even those sparkly bits are darker than anything that you've got over, over there. Because there's no direct sunlight on these guys. But like the minute you do that, can you see you've got all that beautiful depth? Because now you've got one, two, three colors there. Highlight, mid-tone, and a shadow. Okay, so all I've mixed there is just a, a more distinct orangey color. This guy over here is getting a little bit brown now. There we go. And I'm just going to take my fine round and add a few little loose leaves here and there. Just at strategic places like that. And then while you've got the fine line in your hand, just take a look and see here and there if it's going to If you've got like maybe a clump of, of leaves, maybe like this guy over here, over there. You see there, you've got a clump of leaves, but there's no, uh, <laughs> there's no branch to tie them together. So now you just bring out a little branch and just sneak him in in between there, over there like that. Yeah, let's maybe make this a little bit of a longer branch, just doing his own thing over there. Okay, let's stand back again. Yeah, there you go. See, now you've got yourself a, a guy that's looking all nice and natural. And then you can also see if there's places like here where there's no real, um, you've, you've painted closed most of your branches. And just come back in and add a few little guys just sticking their heads out again. Because you always have those odd little branches just doing their own little thing here and there. Like that over there. Alrighty, the end is in sight. All we've got left to do now is this little bit of grass and that bench. 
So let's tackle the grass and then we can put the bench on top of the grass. So at this point, you can see our pallet is an absolute disaster zone. <laughs> There's no place left for uh, any grasses. So I'm going to go over and just grab a new pallet. If you don't have an extra pallet, then what you must do is just scoop up all these colors and just put them to one side, the same as what we did over there with our background colors to make yourself some more space. But this time you will now just need to wash the area that you have cleaned because these browns will quickly dirty the greens. And, and as you can see on the, from the photograph, the greens that we need do need to be nice and vibrant. And besides, I also want to keep this palette so that I can take a photo of it and add it into the, into the handout for you. And then, of course, you've, you've still got over here leaves that have fallen off the tree. So we do need to create that impression of uh, those leaves over there using the colors from the tree. So we do need those colors anyway. All right, so we're going to start. We're going to add in a, a, a bit of a, a grassy, greeny texture, and then we'll add some, we'll, we'll, f we'll let some leaves fall onto it. So to get that greeny effect, let's take some cadmium yellow. We could probably use sap green, but I think we've come so far. Let's just stick with the colors that we've got. Then, we, then there's no new colors. At this late stage, so I'm going to take my yellow, add a little bit of ultramarine into it. And that should give us pretty much the, the green that we need. That's as good as a sap green. Alrighty. So that's sort of a, a the, the mid-tone color, right? Eh? So let's take our yellow and just work a little bit of whatever green is left on the on the knife into that. That'll get us a highlight grass color. And then we'll take some blue and just whatever yellow is left. And that should give us more or less our darkest color over there on that green. I need just a little bit more. Still too blue, it must still be just a dark green. So I'm just adding enough yellow into it to flip that blue over to a dark green. That's great over there. Awesome. Then I'm also just going to take a little bit of burnt sienna, which is going to act as our opposite color. Take some of that and just work that into the our darkest shadow green. So that's going to take that vibrancy away from the yellow and the blue because now you've added the opposite color. So it is a green, but it's a dull, dirty green. Awesome. So at this point, I've still got my brush that we used to block in the tree trunk. And it's still got the brown on it, but it's dark. And we, uh, we've added some brown into this dark green anyway. So I've just wiped off the excess on a paper towel. And I'm going to pick up this dark green. I think we should just work in a little bit of medium into each of these guys, eh? Otherwise we don't get our drying effect. That won't help. Great, you see that? It's a nice little, quite a, quite a dead green. And that's fabulous. That's all we want at this point. Because what we're trying to do here is just get rid of the white of the canvas. Once you've got rid of the white of the canvas, then you can uh, 
add other textures and things onto that. So I'm just going to come up here to the bottom of the tree trunk. That's good enough. As I move across, the paint will now gradually become more and more vibrant because it's now less and less of that dark color on the brush. But it's not going to go to those initial colors simply because you've it's always mixing with whatever's on the brush all right so i just want to get some little texture going on over here so i'm just going to use just some taps and that's going to create some idea of those um individual blades of grass here in the mass that's just like that. You see instantly you get a bit of a, a bit of a grassy look. So this is grass that's quite close up, so we do need to get it um, looking like individual blades of grass. And this is also a great place to use that cut up brush of yours. But if you don't have one of them, you can also just use a, a fine liner. So I think for now I'm going to just use a fine liner. Just roll it around to, to get us a, a sharp point. What we're trying to get here is just a suggestion of little individual blades of grass. I'm going to put a few drops of medium down there that I can dip into just to thin down the paint. So, Because the minute you use fine liners you need to use thin paint. Now what you're trying to do is just create different little directions and things. Can you see there? So now you've got that individual little silhouette of, or you've got the silhouette of individual blades of grass. I'm not panicking too much what it looks like at this stage because all I'm trying to do is break that line that you've got over there. So you can even just use, at this point, little wiggles and squiggles right here on this edge. Let me do that for you. See, it's just little wiggles and squiggles so that you're breaking that, that perfect little line. Then we're going to end up coming in and adding individual, like thinner little blades of grass and stuff like that. And as we move across, I'm going to also gradually start adding, just or start using and picking up darker colors. That's cool. And we'll still start adding just a few little guys overlapping the tree trunk over there like that. Yeah, so the mid-tone here seems to be a nice color for, for over there. So I know that we've got sort of more sandy area over here but we can't see exactly what it is so i'm going to just get myself a little bit of a tie in between here and there there it makes sense here it doesn't these colors don't tie in as well as they i'd like them to so i'm going to just using a horizontal motion just add a few little dabs and dashes like this just to blur that transition from this to this really dark, from the light to the dark. 
just a quick little blur over that and then when we add these individual blades of grass over here then you'd still get your distance but it won't be in that that harsh transition yeah that's fine okay that's that's got us started All right, so now we're going to just take some lighter colors. We'll see, we may need to add a little bit of white into this, just so it goes, your yellow is a, a, a transparent color, just to get it a little bit more opaque. And use a rigger brush. Because now we need to make individual blades of grass. Yeah, I think I'm going to pop just a little bit of white down there. Nice new tube of white. <laughs> and the other one was well finished. That we used at the beginning of the class. Cool. So as you're adding these little blades of grass in you have to make sure that they're all sorts of different angles and stuff so use almost like a bit of a, a crisscrossy motion to get these guys in here That's maybe a little bright, so I'm going to just bring a little bit of green into that. There are some bright guys, but I don't want it too bright. Okay, so what we're trying to create is just a, a, a mess. So we're going to use a, a few different little colors and stuff. To suggest a mess. Right, so as we go along this way, we've got less and less light, so I'm going to use less and less of this. So now I'll start adding more sort of that kind of a color. I'm just making sure that it's 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 light enough so that it is now still contrasting with against the, the darker green that we initially put in. You can see there's a just a few little other goodies growing over here that are, are green. So there's like individual little leaves. Maybe there's a bit of clover or something like that. So I'm just adding those individual leaves in over there. Okay, so now we've also got the rigger brush, so I'm going to add very, very light touch. And I'm going to add individual grasses. Cutting that silhouette over there. Again, all these grasses need to do their own thing, each of their own little angles and so on.
each one's got its own length as well. Different angle, different lengths. And that's the way you keep them looking natural. Alrighty, so now we can take some of our, our leaf colors again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold the palette here in my hand. And I'm going to just pick up individual little leaf colors. I'm going to create little families in exactly the same way as what we created up there in the tree. And I'm going to try and create these families in the same sizes as well. Same size leaf. So I'm just going to start you with the darker guys. So what's going to happen is, as you're adding these in, it's, it's instantly cutting those grasses of yours shorter. So later on, if you wanted long grass, then what you would do is you would just come back in and add more of these longer lines in. As before, we're adding them in in families as well. Okay, cool. Let's go back to some other lighter colors again. So now I'm going to just use the fine liner and I'm going to start adding just individual little patches of leaves now. And, and this little bit here is going to give you all the detail you need because these are individual little dots where the previous guys was just like bigger dots and it's going to give you more of a, a mass effect. Where here, these lighter guys and the individual leaves that you're seeing gives you the detail that you're, that you're looking for. So use lots of paint and keep the paint reasonably thin so that it can lie on top of these previous colors now. That's really important. So my paint is really pretty thin at this stage. And as before, I'm creating little families. Each guy's a different color, different shape, different angle, and so on. Awesome. Maybe a few more orangey ones as well. Got to have a nice little variety of colors, eh? Just to keep it interesting. So as you do this now, just remember to vary the amount of each that you put in different places. For example, here I'm going to add more of this orange. Over there I'm going to add less. Over there, I'll maybe add just one or two. Otherwise, nothing more, you know? Okay, so now I'm just going to add a few little grasses over some of these guys. Not too many, just a few here and there. And that just sinks in. 
all these leaves. Don't overdo it because everything is pretty wet here now. Great, so all we've got left to do now is that, that little seat. So I'll stick with the fine liner. And it's also wood, so I can just use my wood colors. So I think I'll even just hold the, the palette like that. So the seat seems to be sort of this yellowy, orangey, gray kind of a color. So I'll block it in with that. So it does go a little bit narrower uh, on the left hand side because that's further away from you. And here on the right hand side it's a little bit broader. If we can get that a little bit brighter. I'm just adding some more white colors in there. And then we've got the seat. So the seat sticks out further over there, and it just runs parallel to that. And it doesn't go quite all the way to there. It sort of stops at that angle over there. Then he's going to change angle over there for the side of the seat. So I'm also going to change the color. So I'm going to just pick up something like this. change the angle ever so slightly over there like that and use the same color to run a line down there and a line down there for the thickness of the wood okay now we want to get just some of that mold and mildew effect so i'm just going to grab a, a gray kind of a tonal value over here i'm just going to use dabs and dashes All the way along here. So just keep it like really random. All these marks. Some places more, some places less, some places are going to be darker, some places are going to be lighter. But keep it running all the way along the the length of the wood. And that gives you that effect. Yeah, like that. Let's maybe take something a bit lighter. So maybe just this original blue that we used for the sky. Not cleaning the brush, just picking some of it up. On second thoughts, I am going to clean the brush. <laughs> there was just too much dark. Oh, there we go. Just wiped off the brush. Just so that we have a, a lighter version that we're just going to tap in here and there. Don't overdo the light. The darker bit is, is actually what makes that, that lovely effect. I'm 
and as you can see it's quite simple really straightforward that goes there maybe just one or two little marks along there just to bring that that side bit out a little bit better okay now i'm going to pick up some more of those white on it and on the brush in a chisel point and i'm going to just add a little bit of a line over there and a little line over there it just separates this side over here just one or two little light little marks in there just separates this plane and that side plane like that and if you look carefully on the photo you'll see it as well All right, I'm going to wash the brush. And I will just use some of our, our paint gray. So just some of this. That's what's nice about this late stage of the painting. You can just wing it with your, <laughs> with your palette in your hand. So what is important here is that you do get these lengths and stuff reasonably accurate that goes to there there's a bit of metal pipe running underneath there like that that runs along there that foot over there and then here you've got this guy, and this guy, there, and there, just try and get continuity. Like that, and the back foot comes out there like that. Then I'll go back to this little grey over here. Anything that's a little bit lighter. I'm going to just add a little bit of a contrast. Over there, just to indicate. That there's two angles to those to those pipes. Because it's, it's, it's square tubing. Cool. And then the last thing, just grab a little bit of grass. Just add one or two grasses, just hiding the, the tips. Or the feet <laughs> of the bench. Right, so I'm just checking over here. There, I just can't see that dark. I think the the the, the highlight just overtook the light. So I'm just widening up the little dark side of that pole over there. And it does also look like we can just see just a little bit of the underside over there. So I'm just going to run a little. Very thin Payne's grey line just under there. That just indicates that we can see the the width or the thickness of that. Alrighty. Let's stand back and see what does our painting look like. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty, let's go to there. 
there we go now you know how to paint an oak tree just keep at it it's a it's a little bit of a repetitive technique but it's well worth the effort so i hope you enjoyed today's lesson if you did please go and take a look at my website the link is below i have hundreds more classes like this in pencil drawing oil painting acrylic painting there's watercolor there's pastel there's you name it it's there go and take a look i'm sure you're going to enjoy it Good luck with your oak trails. See you next time.